de mas da meta. Love by girls with better issues, 20 old men with receding hairlines, and boomers that couldn't afford a Corvette. Actually, everybody likes the Miata, but there are three big problems that prevent this car from being perfect. And in this video, I will explain to you how I will fix them. In the four years I owned this car, I met all sorts of people that drive this cute little rust box. From doctors to crackheads, everyone can drive this without looking out of place. On paper, it is a perfect weekend car or even daily driver for introverted people. Two seats, rear-wheel drive, perfect weight distribution, handling, a removable roof, and a trunk just big enough to fit a toothbrush. Or if you remove the spare wheel, you can even fit a hand grenade. On top of that, it is very affordable, even by today's standards where a gallon of milk costs you a kidney. Before I can explain to you what will happen to this poor car, you need to imagine yourself as a Miata owner. Here is how the average Miata owner spends his day. Wake up, take a shit, get out of bed. Realize the world is a dark and cold place and go back to bed. Scroll for 3 hours through TikTok and realize you're missing out on life and will probably die alone. Your friend with a Porsche invites you to a cruise. Lie to yourself, my Miata may be slow in the corners, but at least in turns I can keep up with the Porsche. Go to the cruise. Get smashed by the Porsche. One, two, three. Go home. Try not to cry. Cry a lot. But for some reason people still buy these cars. For some reason people love them. And for some f***ing reason boomers sell them for way too much money. And after months of research, I found a reason. Pop-up headlights. This completely useless and obsolete invention raises the value of this car by way too much. Honestly, if it wasn't for these pop-up headlights, there would be no reason to buy the first generation Miata. The second generation Miata is not only cheaper, but also better under every aspect. Don't get me wrong, I still prefer the first generation. I mean, just look at it. It looks like that kid that asks you whether you have any games on your phone. Even my Taliban cousin says it's a nice car. It's a good car. The interior is nice and clean, it looks simple, it doesn't feel cheap, maybe because it's not American. However, the original steering wheel is made from midgets or people that don't have legs. Actually, the whole car is made from midgets. I am just 1.8 meters tall and this car barely fits me. And when I don't cut my hair for too long, it touches the roof. So this functions as a reminder that I need to go to the barber. This specific Miata is equipped with a hard top. Normally this is where the soft top would be, but I removed it for extra storage space. Just kidding, someone stole it. If I wasn't a young and beautiful strong man, I wouldn't try this myself, but let's give it a try. I don't like driving topless, so I never take it off. And going to my garage, opening the doors and seeing that little red monster just makes me feel good. Just like opening the fridge at 3am to find some leftover spaghetti. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I just say that I have a garage? Garage tour time. Alright, so here we have some uh, wood. Everybody needs some wood. A trench for the upcoming war. Soap that turned into stone. And yeah, that's it. I know it's not the biggest garage on YouTube, but for the first time in my life I have a space for my own and most importantly to store and work on my Miata. It is a small garage, but potentially the starting ground of something great, provided my channel doesn't die in the next few months. About that great thing, here is what will happen to this car. The goal of this build will be a street car that can do drifting, track days, all that fun stuff, while still being daily drivable. But we need to tackle three problems. Problem number one. Power. The Miata is powered by an engine that is very reliable, easy to maintain, loves to rev high, but it's miserably underpowered. A wrench has more torque, literally. And even though the Miata weighs only one ton, this engine is just too weak. Let me demonstrate you by doing an acceleration benchmark. The most important thing is not safety, but to check whether there is someone around you to not embarrass yourself. Alright, here we go. How do we fix this? I considered three options. Option number one, turbocharging. This is the most logical and cheapest option for more power. Option number two, supercharging is easier to do than turbocharging, but it's a bit more expensive and less effective. And finally, 
option number three doing an engine swap i also like to call it going balls deep on paper this is the perfect base for a turbo build it's a low mileage mechanically healthy car but if you want to have a lot of reliable power from this engine prepare to grab your daddy's retirement fund it costs insane amount of money to prepare an engine for high horsepower and it's very tricky to make reliable option number one dismissed what about supercharging Apparently, it's very easy to do, so basically I could do it myself. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the original plan. But then, one day, while mindlessly scrolling through YouTube, it happened. I decided against it. Supercharging is off the table. So this leaves us with the final option, swapping the engine. Yes, this mechanically perfect Miata will get its heart ripped out and replaced with another engine. But what engine do we put in? A better four-cylinder engine? A Volvo five-cylinder engine? <laughs> A six-cylinder engine? No, this car will have a V8, specifically the 3UZ from Lexus. But why this engine? Well, I got inspired from Sam from Night Ride. You should check out this channel. He put a almost identical engine into his Miata, the 1UZ. The 1UZ is a bit less powerful, but it's more reliable. I'm still going with the 3UZ. 50 more horsepower. And here is how powerful the Miata could be on paper. Almost 300 horsepower and 450 Nm of torque. I know it's not crazy for a V8 engine, but I think it's more than enough for a car that weighs less than a ton. Also, the drivetrain, aka the transmission, drive shaft, and rear differential will be rated for much more power. So adding extra power in the future is not completely off the table. Ugh. Problem number two. Rust, aka free weight reduction. Japanese engineers from the 90s calculated this car to start rusting exactly when you buy it. And since I bought this car in Austria where salting roads is as common as having bad painters, this car is not rust free. Paint. Red paint from the 90s, especially from Japan. In the sun, it will fade quicker than a Polish man's hairline. This car will be repainted, but I don't think I want to go crazy here. I think the original red color is just iconic and it fits the car, it fits my channel icon, it's recognizable. But I'm open for suggestions. It needs to be a bright shade of red. The repainting and restoration of this car will also be an opportunity for a little bit of plastic surgery. I ordered a few parts from Carbon Miata, but I'm still not sure if I will put them on my car. The dark tail? Yes, definitely. The fender flares? I don't know. We'll see how good the ties and wheels fit without cutting the fenders. Originally inspired by Phil from Car Throttle and other Miatas on Instagram, I initially planned the same white body treatment, but this is no longer up to date. You will see why in the next video. Speaking of wheels, check this out. Rota Grid 5. The wheels are also no longer up to date. You will see why in the next video. And that's it for the boring stuff. As of the time you're watching this video, this Miata is completely disassembled and is being restored. No more rust and new paint. But this will come in the next video. And now, the last problem. Cost. I didn't know that building cars is so expensive. Especially now after two years of Covid and the war in Ukraine, prices are going insane. I have a lot of people watching me and I think this is a good opportunity to get some sponsors. I mean, I think you would do the same, right? So here is my question to you. Do you think it's a good deal for me to do more paid ads and videos? For you it would be just a matter of skipping the ad or even better, watching it or maybe even clicking on it. And for me, this would be a couple more bucks for future projects. Obviously, I won't spam them in every single video. And trust me, I have a lot of ideas. Let me know in the comments if you have something against paid ads and videos. I will listen to you. I believe that great things take time, so let me be honest with you. This car will not be finished until the beginning of next year. Actually, it may not even be finished until the end of next summer. But I bought another car to make content with. It is hidden somewhere in this video. Maybe you can find it. But, once it's ready, I have a lot of plans with it. From collabs with other YouTubers, to taking it to the Nordschleife and other racetracks, to drift events, car meets, everything is planned. I wouldn't even say no to a USA trip. Literally, anything goes. Last but not least, I commissioned an artist from Morocco, the Japanese Fox, to draw a few posters to support this project. Last question, how do we name this car? There is Phil from Car Throttle, there is Molly from Jinjin. What will this be? Does it even need a name? Should we just call it the Mighty Miata?